Transfection is a very membrane active phenomenon and a complex one at that. A lot of membrane biologists have been studying the mechanism of transfection for the past 20 years, but very little is understood about what exactly happens inside the cell. Here is a simple animation that shows what happens during transfection. When you take your already formed transfection complexes and incubate them with the cells, some of these transfection complexes go and bind to the cell membrane. These bound transfection complexes are then taken up by the cell using a variety of endocytic pathways. It is generally known that clathrin-dependent and caviolin-dependent endocytic pathways play a major role in the transfection complex uptake. There are also other pathways such as macropinocytosis and the rest that are involved in transfection. These endosomes then go through a variety of endocytic pathways and the transfection complex finally lands up in the really low pH environment of the endolysosomes. For effective functionality, however, the transfection complex and also the nucleic acid needs to escape this low pH environment and gets released into cytoplasm. For nucleic acids such as siRNA and mRNA, the cytoplasmic location is sufficient for functionality. However, in cases of plasma DNA, there is further shuttling required into the nucleus so that gene expression can ensue. The reason transfection reagents are able to complex with nucleic acids effectively is inherent in their composition. A vast variety of commercially available transfection reagents are made up of cationic lipids. Cationic lipids are polar lipids that are formed of a highly positively charged head group attached to long hydrophobic tails. A few examples are DOTAP and DDAP. The polar nature of these lipids allows the positively charged head group to associate effectively with the negatively charged nucleic acid, while the hydrophobic tails can associate with themselves to form complexes called lipoplexes. These complexes do need to have a net positive charge to effectively associate with the cellular membrane that is negatively charged. In addition to cationic lipids, a few transfection reagents also contain another class of lipids called the helper lipids. A few classic examples of helper lipids are dope and cholesterol. The helper lipids in conjunction with cationic lipids form structures called liposomes that are effectively able to encapsulate DNA. These liposomes can be unilamellar, as seen in the middle here, or multilayered. The theme of a net positive charge with these liposomes continues, and it is often seen that these liposomal formulations tend to be more toxic than other transfection formulations. A very different class of components for transfection reagents than the already discussed lipids are cationic polymers. These compounds are very effective nucleic acid condensing agents because of their polymeric nature. An example is polyethylene amine that can be linear or branched as shown here. These polymers typically provide a lot of positively charged side groups, in this case amine groups, that can interact efficiently with the negative backbone of DNA and form complexes called polyplexes. These polyplexes also need to have a net positive charge. Now that we've discussed what major classes of compounds make up transfection reagents, I'm going to briefly describe to you what mirrors transfection reagents are made up of. We employ unique lipid and polymer combinations that work synergistically to provide effective condensation and complexation of nucleic acids. Since our reagents are made up of both lipid and cationic polymers, the transfection complexes that result with the interaction of plasmid DNA are referred to as lipopolyplexes. Again, it is important for these lipopolyplexes to have a net positive charge. Throughout the years, we have seen that these lipoplexic formulations tend to be the least toxic formulation compared to all other classes of transfection formulations. Now that we have seen how important the chemical composition and the type of complexes can be in deciding how efficient or toxic the transfection reagent is, there are also other features of transfection complexes that need to be considered for efficient transfection. 
One such parameter is the size of transfection complexes. It can range from anywhere between 40 to 1,000 nanometers. With our reagents, we have typically seen this to fall in the range of 300 to 500 nanometers. Keep in mind that either very small transfection complexes or very large transfection complexes are not very efficient at uptake by the cell. Another key parameter in the grand scheme of transfection is the overall charge of the transfection complexes. As I mentioned in the previous few slides, all kinds of transfection complexes, be either be lipid or polymer-based, should have a net cationic charge. Now, this really needs to manifest in terms of an overall positive surface charge density of the transfection complexes. This surface charge density by gene delivery scientists is calculated in terms of the zeta potential, which typically should be on the slightly positive end. Another parameter that is related to charge is the charge ratio of the transfection complexes. This charge ratio essentially is the molar ratio of the positively charged moieties on a transfection reagent that complex with the negatively charged phosphate moieties of the DNA backbone. This is often referred to as by gene delivery specialists as NP charge ratio or just NP ratio. Here is an example of a branch PEI molecule that offers several amine groups to complex with the backbone of DNA. So in this case, the charge ratio effectively would be the molar ratio of all the amine groups that are available to access the phosphate backbone of DNA to the phosphate groups on the DNA. This charge ratio is indeed a very important parameter. You'll realize this because for a lot of transfection optimization, pretty much with every transfection reagent, when you're asked to optimize the reagent to nucleic acid ratio, what you're essentially optimizing is the charge ratio of your transfection complexes. Here is an example of different reagents, reagent A, reagent B, and reagent C, that are being optimized for different ratios of the reagent to a fixed amount of nucleic acid in this case. And as you can see, different transfection reagents, because of their inherently different nature, show different profiles in terms of what charge ratio works the best for transfection. So keep in mind that this charge ratio indeed does impact your transfection experiments directly. You can also learn more on our website www.thetransfectionexperts.com. We have a technical resources section that you can find useful for uh, gaining more information about transfection. We have tips from the bench there to help with particular experiment types such as DNA transfection or siRNA transfection. We also have a comprehensive transfection database called the Reagent Agent, which gives you recommendations for your particular cell type and nucleic acid combinations. You can also speak with the transfection experts directly by either conning us or emailing us at our tech support address. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this tutorial. If you have any feedback to give to us or any questions, please do contact us.